Awesome. Welcome back to Good Moms, Bad Choices. I'm Erica. And I'm Mila. And it's Wednesday. And it's Scorpio season, bitches. What's up, Scorpios? You see my beautiful Scorpio candle I have here? I do. It's beautiful. It's from Tarjay. I love Tarjay. Tarjay has a, a wide selection of astrology candles. Did you get me one? No, because it's not cancer season. Oh, okay. Well, I'm going to go get myself one. Mm-hmm, you should. <laughs> um... Well, how are you doing today, my love? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Um, I'm excited for the rest of my day. I'm excited for our guest we have here today. Same. I know. We, do, we have a kind of a pop-in day, right? Yeah. You know, when you're in a, a woman of a certain age, when you have more than like three plans in a week, it's crazy. You're like, my week, like, I was like, damn, I have three things to do already. Like, my whole week's done. <laughs> I was like, I'm tired already just thinking about it. Yeah, we got a lot of things. We got a lot of things to get to today. To 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 today. We got a what? To today. To do today. A lot of to. Break it down. I was in beatboxing lately, so that might be. Luna loves the beatbox and freestyle. It makes. Oh well, they need to. They need to get it together then. Yeah, because Iris getting real good over there. They need to be salt and pepper. Anyway, um, how are you? I'm good. Yeah? I'm good. I'm really good, yeah. Great. <laughs> Have we done this before? No, never. <laughs> Are you high? No, I'm not. Me neither. Okay, just awkward. Maybe that's what the problem is. I think that is. So, yeah, we haven't smoked today, guys. I know, rare, rare sighting. Um, <laughs> rare sighting. I'm sober. It's going to be rough. Um, anyway, guys, um, we're just going to get straight to our guests. Because on YouTube, everyone gets mad at us that we don't introduce our guests immediately. We, like, talk for, like, five minutes, and then they, like, curse us out on YouTube and say we're really rude. So, Do we have on our YouTube that it says it's, like, Good Moms, Bad Choices podcast, or does it just say Good Moms, Bad Choices? I think they think it's a YouTube show. Yeah, they're confused. Okay, well, YouTubers, this is for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I want to welcome our guests. Um, I'm really excited. The theme of this month is cuffing season November and I was thinking like what are who are some like bomb ass married people that I know and I was like oh my god my girl she just got married like when don't you got married last year I think 2020 20, oh shit she got oh, married yeah, oh yeah and we had her on the, we had her on our show a while ago and I was like it's time to redo let's run this back so I would like to welcome to the show Grammy award winner bomb ass mom actress fine just overall fine woman and, and our friend and our friend <laughs> Melanie Fiona hey guys Hi. so nice to be here again and guess what guys she brought her partner Jared we brought the man we brought, brought the her man. hi baby do you say partner or do you say husband I say both. Yeah. I say both. But it's mostly husband. 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 And yeah. she normally says husband. This is my husband. My husband. This is my husband. When I get a husband, I'm going to say it like that too. Yeah. That's my husband. That's just my baby daddy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He was for a long Who time. Who that is? <laughs> he was just my baby daddy for a long time. <laughs> like four years. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I've, I, I saw, I remember seeing you guys uh, get married during the pandemic and you had the cutest little video and like the cutest little like chapel wedding. I was like, this is so beautiful. Let's be clear. It wasn't even a chapel chapel it was it's technically considered like a a storefront a storefront <laughs> yeah okay what, what? where was it it's, it's, in, it's in no it's in uh sherman oaks sherman. it's called same day marriage.com <laughs> is that by my house it's on laurel is it on laurel canyon yes, yes. oh yeah oh, i've seen that, that before yes it's on they, a busy street yes it's on laurel, laurel canyon, canyon. Yeah. like moore park or something no and, and now uh, riverside riverside yeah we literally would drive by there all the time and be like ayo if it doesn't work out with the wedding we could always go there ha 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 lo and behold Ended up there on our wedding day. Absolutely. It was perfect. It was clutch. They had the date available that we wanted. And we literally walked right next door from the liquor store, bought champagne, popped it on the corner. It was perfect. It was crazy because it was like the exact opposite of what we were initially setting out to do. You know, at first... You know, we were like, yeah, we're going to go to Italy. We, we had the hotel. <laughs> we had a destination we had wedding. It was, it was like, all the all the bouginess. Oh, a lot of bouginess. A lot of bouginess. A lot of money. You saved like $150,000. Probably Facts. more. Yes. Like, probably like, more. Facts. Yeah. But to be honest, it, it, even, even our Italy plans were still going to be small. Res- they were small. But, like, just the overall thing of it. Just, like, the way that we got it done in the end absolutely was perfect for us. Yeah. But I do still want a wedding, let's be clear. You do? Oh, you do? I do. Okay. So I you... have a dress in the closet sitting in everything. Uh, okay. You know women, we They've been feeding us that dream since birth, But so. you know what the thing is for me? It's like, I think prior to the pandemic, it was the dream, I guess, of whatever, but now it's more about the celebration. The party. Now it's more about 
cherishing the guests, cherishing the memories, having my parents there, having his parents there, like those things that we lost for two years, you know? So, so that's, that's what the wedding signifies to me. So now, but now we have a ring bearer and a flower girl because now we got two whole children. So. Yes. Yeah. What, what made you guys, what prompted you during um, uh, the pandemic to be like, fuck it, let's just go to the same day wedding? You thought we, the world we was going to end? What? <laughs> that's okay, that's <laughs> that part. We had rescheduled like, what, two, three times. Yeah. And it, at one point we were just like, it's not about all that, all that fanfare at the end of the day. It's about us uniting, you know, uh, with each other, making that commitment. And to be honest, like, Signing the paper was just as ceremonial to me anyway than than going through all that. You yeah, know, it was like, oh shit, this is a this is a commitment now. Like contract, contract, contract. You know, what we saying? know what that is. Yeah, we do that in business, business all day. Right, being in business is what we do all day. Right, so signing the contract was like, oh wow, no, this is this is more than just cuffing season. This is even even the next level. But there were a few things that happened and and like we saw that time was just going and we're like, all right, like, are we really going to wait forever for this? Cause we had already been engaged for three years. Mm. So we were like, we, we need to get this done. So there was three things, two things that happened. And we were like, we should do this as the third. The first was we bought a house. The second was I was in like these like professional situations I was working to get out of. I got out of those. And then we were like, you know what? It's the end of the year. We should just get married. Like we should just, cap it off at three let's go out big and so we did and so that that was the third thing we called our parents we're like hey do we have your blessing to just do this without you guys we love you (laughs) but we we're just going to do this with us and we went we didn't even take cam our son Wow. We just went, the two of us. It's yeah. very intimate. Yeah. yeah. It That's is. It's beautiful. Yeah. It it's one of my favorite memories. Honestly, sure. I, I wouldn't I wouldn't have it any other way at this point. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, we'll we'll do a wedding, a celebration or whatever eventually, but the way it worked out was perfect for us and, and like indicative of who we are. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like it always came back to us at the end of the day. And that's that's what I think marriage is about, to be honest. That's what it should be you get, about. Yeah, you get lost in the fanfare of what everybody else wants. I've seen so many people lose friendships, family, relationships mm. over weddings and money. Oh and God. It's mm. awful. <clears throat> and so I just love that we just removed all of that. And at the end of the day, when we think about that day, it's really just about us. And that's who it's about every day Yeah, when we go through this thing. And like marriage. you said, <laughs> saved like $150,000. Yeah. yeah, and by the yeah. way, the coins. Saving and, coins. And that night, you just, just went home regular to the house? No, she, we went to Santa Barbara for the night. Up, yeah. Nice. Yeah, oh, we had a little staycation, staycation honeymoon. Yeah. The two of us, we went. We had a great time. Mm-hmm. It was great. That's beautiful. Yeah, we That's bought a very time. expensive bottle of wine. Good. Yeah, I had, had some, a great room. I got to break out some lingerie. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. We got to order. We were just, it was just all the libations all night. We woke uh-huh. up, we walked the beach the next day. It was great. And we hadn't had those moments, especially for all year, because we were locked in the house. Right. So to be able to have those that moment to just the two of us, you know, our son was taken care of. We were really allowed to celebrate ourselves that night. So Aww. it was great. Yeah. How long have you guys been together? Be ten, nine year? it'll Wait, be 10 years next, next year, year. Yeah. so nine years, nine years Wait, so. so tell like tell us how you met i think you told us a little bit the last time you were here but like <laughs> tell us how you met and and all that jazz because i'm curious so we met on an island well no we actually technically we first met in a studio so when i was working on my second album the mf life he was actually working in his studio which was right next door we had never ever seen each other then one day my management manager at the time was like, hey, let's go next door. Um, Jared Cotter and his partner Dan are back there. They want to play you a song. And I'm in the middle of recording and I'm like, I don't have time for this. Right. <laughs> so I walk in. Right. But of course, but they, they're cool. Right. So but we but we never like met met. So we walk in. I see him. He's cute. But I'm also in a relationship at the time. So I don't see him like that. Right. Cut to three years later. About three years later, we end up on an island on a writing trip mm. where oh, like one of those writing. Yes. Like I'm like he's there as a songwriter. I'm there as an artist. And we're basically creating with different people to create music to possibly get placed. Or if you're an artist, put it on your album, whatever. Long story short, we met on the island and it was just we took the same flight out there uh-huh. and it was like instant connection and not instant connection. Like, damn, you fine. Like it was like, damn, you're cool as hell mm-hmm. and you cute. Right? Like, for both of us, I think. Write me a song. (laughs) Write me a song. How do you feel about me? How are you feeling about this? Um, So, so yeah, it was just great. And then getting that time to be together on that island, it was just really cute. Like, it wasn't... It wasn't this immediate, like, oh, it was just, like, seeing him around, like, hanging out, eating lunch together. So, I'm very easily turned off. Very (laughs) easily. Because I'm very particular about what I'm attracted to, what I like. A man could be fine and say one stupid ass ignorant thing. And I'm like, oh, no, 
I'm <laughs> off of you. You're going to have to win back my affections. He never did that the whole trip. <laughs> so I was like, wow. Good job, Jay. Yeah. 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 You didn't even know you were being tested. He did it. You didn't even know. <laughs> and the craziest part is that before I went on that trip, I was, you know, I was single for like a year, almost and a half at that point. And I was doing the dating thing and I was like, oh, this is exhausting. My energy and my body is just worth more than this. Like I can't be out here in these streets. So I literally said to my best friend at the time, I was like, I want to meet someone. I'm like, I'm, I feel like I'm in this space where I want to meet someone that I really like again. Like I want to be around. I like their energy and I want to be there. And then I went on the island and I, and I met him. And I was like, oh, oh, you it's spoken, you. You spoke it. Were you I flirting did. like on the island? Was oh, it, at that point you knew what was up. What about you, Jared? When you met her in the studio, were you like, oh, you said you were also in a relationship, right? I was also in a relationship in, at the studio, but um, wasn't I, the girl there? No. Oh, okay. No. No. <laughs> why, are you, no. why are you trying to make it messy? Wait, <laughs> wasn't she there? Well, no. I, I was just re- I was just rethinking of a story that Melanie had told me about when she met her husband, and she was uh, like, "I didn't think I was like his type." Yeah. And, no. And she why, think, why, did, why is that? Because she, she was like, <laughs> because he was. I, I always say this: it's because he was pretty and he was doing things. That's what I said, and I just always <laughs> thought. What does that even mean? I don't know. I mean, I, okay, if I'm gonna be really You're honest, pretty and doing I, shit too. I, girl. I thought, yeah, yeah I know, but if I'm gonna be really honest, I just thought he liked white girls. I'm not. That's gonna lie. what it was. Okay. I was trying to say without I saying did. it. it was, I did. He must have been dating a white woman at that time. He, he wasn't, and he doesn't. Oh, and I, that was my surprise. He he proved me wrong. <laughs> Melanie is me because I'd be like, he probably dated white women. I really did. That's my category is categorized men it's just not I fair really but. Wow. i really i don't technically do that but for him i just didn't i did not think that i was his type Mm-mm, at all but and, you were in art but, but i yeah fortunately for us <laughs> yeah thank goodness yeah. um i don't know where we were going with that how we met oh, you were in a relationship met. at the time i was but it was it, it was definitely at the end of the relationship and i was looking for the catalyst on Mm-hmm. Oh, sorry. I was looking for the 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 catalyst to to leave, you mm-hmm. know. And um, it was a great relationship, but it just ran its course. And when I met Melanie, I was like, "Oh, this is how it's supposed to feel. Mm-hmm. This is where I'm supposed to be at," you know. Um, so you know, just got past that because when we landed after the island, she literally looked me in my face and was like, "So, uh, that was fun. <laughs> Don't call me." What? what? Yeah. <laughs> Why did you do that? Is that a little crazy? No, because you know, because you know what it was is because I I saw the potential of like what we what we were to to each other in that short time, and it was organic and it was cool, it was beautiful, and I was like, you have some cleaning up to do. Like you're at you're getting out of this relationship. You you're fresh. Like you don't you've been in a relationship for a long time. Like I don't want to be a rebound, rebound situation. I don't want this to confuse what it is you feel like you need to do for yourself. And so I lit I, we landed at JFK and literally went separate ways. And I was like, do not yeah. call me. And I was like, don't call me like for but real. To be honest, I really respected it. You know what I mean? Like as as a man, you're like whatever, man. You know, you you try to have this ego, but I I, I really respected that. That she had the respect for herself to be like, you know, you're you're actually not ready for for what I want for me, you know. Yeah. Um, and so from that point on, you know, it had it made me do some reflecting and realize that you know, no, she she is what I want, so I need to make, take the steps to to make that happen. I think that like uh, you know, I feel like if women and even men, but mostly women, if we followed this. This, I guess this guide or had more guts in just <clears throat> understanding our value mm-hmm. and like doing that, then yeah. we would get what we want more. Well, you know, the, I, I agree because the thing about it is too, even with him, like after we started dating, like soon into after we started dating, I said, I loved you first. Like I was like, I love you. I'm not telling you because I need you to tell me back. I'm not telling you because I need you to be in love with me. I'm telling you because I'm in a space of not holding back on my truth. And I love you. And I'm not going to ever say like, oh, I, d- I was playing it safe. Or like, no, I'm going to let you know how I feel from jump. Right. Which also included, hey, I'm also not going to be the girl that you just dating for a year. I told him. Like, I was like, I've done the work. I know what I want. I love what we're having. It was, And it was early. And he was like, oh. Uh, this, and I was like, listen, <laughs> I was like, this is not, I'm not giving you an ultimatum. I'm just letting you know that a year from now, I don't want to be in this position. Because mm-hmm. I want I want a person. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, um, and then, you know, we had to. We we broke up along the way because there were there was some some um there wasn't synergy all the time. Even though I know he loved me too, and I knew that he also wanted to be with me, I also knew there were things he needed to do for himself, and so it couldn't be at the expense of my feelings. And when we did decide to part before we got back together, and let which what led us to here, 
we both were on the same page. Like yeah. we know what it is. Like we've tried and there's just certain things that aren't aligning right now. It was at the expense of my feelings though, because she broke up with me <laughs> on Valentine's day. Oh no, that was the first time. Why are you so dramatic? You know what I'm saying? I'm an answer. What are I you love talking you. about? Don't say it back. <laughs> don't, don't call me. Don't call me. I love you. Don't call me. It's a Valentine's day. We're done. <laughs> well, uh, uh, there, uh, uh, yeah, I guess I characters did. are a little well, dramatic. I mean, le- no, uh, let's be clear. There was, there was a slight offense the day before. Whatever, what, what, what whatever bro, whatever. You lied to me. It's fine. Whatever. You'd be lying. Oh, he lied uh, to me. I don't like lying. No just, one likes no. lying. No. No, some people don't mind it. It's really like a thing for me. I don't like it. That's just like just tell me the truth. Like if I give you no don't I don't I don't believe that I'm giving ever anyone a reason to lie to me. Right. So it's like Wait a second, how did I lie to you? <laughs> He's like, wait, hold on, what? You lied to me. And it was funny. We don't this, have to rehash it. We don't ten, have to rehash it. It was 10 years ago. But like, it was. It was 10 years ago. But the, the, the get the answers don't forget shit. We don't forget they shit. Don't. Like February 13th. Y'all don't. Yes. Oh, so you feel 2014. Me. Yeah. yeah. You at, said to me. We were in the store. It's true. Yeah, anyway. Uh-huh. <laughs> Uh huh. She's like, don't we hear now? Try though I'll tell you, we hear now though. Uh, but no, but that, oh but that, God. that was the first time. That was the first time we broke up on Valentine's Day, and then we got back together shortly after. But the, but the time that we really broke up was it was almost <laughs> a year later, and it, it was actually right before his birthday, which was also yeah, that's good. Well, because, yeah, that was nice too. Because also. <laughs> Just protecting my listen, feelings listen, all the time. If you would get your shit together, feelings, then the timing you. would have been right. Yeah, so you would have been a minute shake. So pretty much what happened was is that he was going to come home to Toronto and we were going to celebrate his birthday in Toronto. That's Are you also from Toronto? No, I'm from New York. Okay. So we were going to have this trip home to Toronto, but like he's not going to come home to Toronto and not meet my family and be everybody. It's been a year almost since we've been dating, right? So what we had gotten to this place where this feeling of like, hot and cold was coming in and it's like it was never it was always hot between us but I always felt this like hesitation from him and I recognized what it was it was because he had never had that time to be by himself Mm -hmm. it's because he didn't know what to do with the idea of actually meeting the person that he could be like yo this is this is what I actually really want and so that day that we looked at each other and we're like hey look we really tried we really tried but I think it's best that we just kind of create some space yeah. at the moment. So, we- but happy birthday! <laughs> I sent him balloons. I sent him Not a gift. I, sent I did. It was in love, and that was the thing. It, that I think that that breakup for for me was the first time I had ever parted with someone in love. Um, and not out of like spite or even though I was hurt, we were both hurt. Mm -hmm. We were both hurt at the fact that we couldn't figure out how to make it work Mm -hmm. the way we both wanted to. And so I think that there was just mutual respect there. For sure. So, but we knew that there was space. And then also with me, with being a boundary, I'm also like, again, don't call me because I don't want to do this. Hey, just no, like call me when we have something to really talk about when you have something to say. And we don't need to talk friendly, casually about the weather. None of that shit. If we're breaking up. We're breaking up. Mm-hmm. Um, but if you if you want it, and if you really know what it is, then like find me. Mm-hmm. And he did. So she was out in them streets for like six months. <laughs> <laughs> Do you agree with this with this um, take on how this went down? I'm always curious because you know people have different perspectives, even sure. in, even in love. I I agree that everyone should do what they feel is best for them. Right. So. So, yeah, I think that was best for her. And ultimately, it turned out, obviously, to be best for us. I think I did have some growing to do. You know, there was um, a little bit of um, an emotional catch up for for me to get to, you know, to to, to be where she was at at the time. Um, You know, it's not that I was still out in them streets at all, but I was I was still very much about me as opposed to about us. Mm. And um once and it, it, it took me six months to 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 get there you know it was like wait a second i'm not gonna miss out on what we could be because i'm worried about me yeah like what happened in those six months where you just like like what was the thing that kind of brought you guys back together like i just stopped i couldn't stop thinking about her you know and like what if what if, what if i had like really made my focus the two of us, what would happen, you know? And, and I realized after that time, I was like, I don't want to wait six years and, mm-hmm. and w- still be thinking about that, mm-hmm. you know? Um, and uh, so I was like, let me make the commitment to at least try, you know, let's try to give each other what we, we both need and uh, see where we end up. Mm. So I think I'm going to cry. <laughs> Not the kids here oh in tears God. making an appearance. Here we go. What are you crying over there for, bitch? 
Yeah. It is a really beautiful story. I do love <laughs> it, our story. It, it's nice. I yeah. do love our story because it really, it, it's honest. And I think it's a real, it's a real testament to compassion and growth and patience and self-awareness. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. You know, it was, it was a lot. It was, it was a lot for us to go through in a short amount of time. Yeah. Um, and I think a lot of men need to hear that type of story too. To be honest, because a lot of guys have missed out, and, and a lot of women have missed out on good, good men, and women have missed out on, uh, and men have missed out on, on good, good women. women. Sorry, um, because of ah, well, forget it. You know, I'm moving on. She moving on. I'm moving on. You know what I mean? As opposed to like, wait a second, go. and then six years later, it's too late. It's too late at that <laughs> point. You know, um, and. I didn't. I didn't want to look back and be like, "Damn, it's too late." She's married with kids. With somebody should have, could have, would have. Writing an R and B song, singing in the rain. <laughs> <laughs> We've seen them. We've seen them. Yeah, yeah, and I think you know, just that's what marriage is too, right? You know, um, we of course you go through problems, you go through arguments, and you, you know, a lot of times, especially in this generation, it'd be like, "All right, well, I guess that's done." But nah, it don't have to be that. Like, let's talk. Let's go to therapy. Let's uh, let's figure this out. And and then if we do everything that we can and it's still in a place, then we could talk about something. But let's let's at least try to to be who we need to be for each other. Mm. So that's and that's I what think we're too at. the 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 testament to like not taking things personally. That was the first time I think in our separate when we were separated before we got back together that I still had like love for someone. I didn't take it personally. Like, Oh, you're not choosing me. You don't see how bomb I am. Yeah. Like Mm -hmm. I was like, Oh no, like what he's going through is nothing. has nothing to do with me. Um, it's his own thing. And I feel like that's still applicable in marriage. Mm. It's like, okay, whatever you're going through, I'm going to try not to take that personally. Um, well, because knows, ultimately, cancer it's, it's, can take some shit personal. Oh, we can take it personally. <laughs> well, because we can take it's, it personally. It's, it's really supposed to be friendship. I think <clears throat> this situation reminds me of a, a, a relationship that I had with a guy that I'm. You know, we're not going to be together. I don't. I don't see that happening. Um, but when we ended our relationship, it was the first time I've ever ended a relationship, and we were like laughing. Like we were. If you yeah. saw us in public, you would have thought we were having a date. But we were kind of just like calling it truce. Like this isn't going to work. Yes. I love you. Yeah. But like I was sad, yeah. But I was like, I'm so happy that we did this, yeah. Like we really tried, and and that person's still my friend to this day. But like I think people always wait for shit, and I always tell my friends that are like love to like have these blow up like mm. relationships. I'm like, why do you wait to hate them? Yes. Right. Like why do you have to hate them to leave? Yeah. Like you could save because even potentially e- you could even potentially save the relationship. Yeah, it's easier. It's easier to be angry than sad. Yeah. 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 So give me a reason to be angry. I mean, I can I definitely believe that I've operated like that in previous relationships. Um and even like even to now I'm still guilty. It's like I would if if I'm upset like being mad rather than just being like you hurt my feelings being like I'm not fucking with you right now right you know like it's a, it's a thing like it, it it is a thing it's what people do but it doesn't have to be that and I I agree with you like it should it can there is a especially when there's mutual respect like nobody's out here making a fool of somebody lying being deceitful disrespecting like whatever all that is because that's when you feel that's when it's easy to take it real like get angry. But when you just see that it's just not working or for whatever reason, it's just like, yo, it's all good. Like, I mean, it, it definitely hurts because you're like, why, God? Like, yeah, why? Yeah. You know, like, why can't you be this person for right. me? Mm-hmm. But like, ultimately, I feel like the, you have a higher potential of possibly figuring it out in the future if you guys kind of just. Case in point, you know? Yeah, I, I do. Case think, in point. I do think that women <clears throat> like just are this like how we're conditioned in society, our worthiness and our value. F- a lot of times we've been taught that it has to do with like our relationship status. Mm-hmm. And so I think for a lot of women, when a guy is not giving you someone you, you fuck with and you want it to work and he's not giving that to you, instead of being like, you know what? I see that you have too much going on and I value what I, the growth that I've done right. so much that I'm going to step away. A lot of times <clears throat> it's about winning. Oh, I'm yeah. going to convince you that I'm worthy because our self-worth is so often tied into our relationship status and being chosen because right. that's like the fairy tale that we're, we're spoon fed. Right. But in reality, like if we have like the value and the self-worth without the relationship and we have the like wherewithal to walk away from something that's not aligning with our spirit, then if it's for you, it will be for you. Yeah. And I think even I am guilty of this too. Like, I'm going to convince you. Oh, you don't like free woman. What about now? 
Like, right. but I'm a good woman, but right. I'm smart, but I'm doing something, you know, like trying to let, like plead almost in mm-hmm. this way because you want someone to see you like, yes. like in a certain, like you're like, I'm bomb, I'm this, yes. but, but it's really the self-worth comes in like, I'm out. Yeah. You know what and I mean? And I think too, where when Jared and I met, I had come off of a year of a lot of self-worth. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I think that that's what allowed me to be that version of myself for him and in this situation. Um, it's absolutely that it's absolutely just the self worth part of it, not being like, Hey, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not taking it personally. Right. You don't need this to choose a- me. You need to know it's me for you. <clears throat> Period. Right. Yeah. And, and like women are always like caught up in like, who's going to say I love you first. Oh, he said, you oh, know whatever. what I mean? It's like, no, I love you. Yeah, I love you. you. <laughs> I don't care. I'm in love. Okay. Yeah. yeah. You don't have to say it back, but listen, I know how no, I feel. I'm I know cool how with that. I feel. Yeah. And that's not contingent on any, it's obviously already been contingent on whatever it is that you're doing or not doing. So this is how I feel. I'm just going to say that. And if that scares you, well, this is the thing about that. Like if you being at, I feel like at this grown age too, in our thirties, like if you are not thinking shit, I just turned 40. If you are not, um, like if you're afraid to just speak your truth to somebody as an adult and feel like that's going to scare them off, that's not the person for you anyways, mm-hmm. period. Like that. I have a friend like that. She's like, I'm like constantly like, should I call him? Should I? I'm like, bitch, you are grown as hell. Yeah. <laughs> Who gives a fuck? Yeah. I was like, tell him you like him. Yeah. Tell him like, you know, this hurts your feelings. Somehow it makes you feel. I'm like, this is, I'm like, you're never going to get what you want being afraid to say how you feel mm-hmm. because you're afraid of your own feelings Oof. and you're afraid of how someone is going to react to them. Like, how do you expect to have a relationship and you are not even aligned with yourself? If it bothers you to say it out loud to someone else, you have some work to do on yourself. I would just like to know if there's any sort of audio that can be added that sounds like sprinkling gems. <laughs> because Mila is on her podium today. Okay, Add some glitter in there, baby. She is, she is speaking these words. <laughs> Put some fairy dust on my name. Put some fairy dust on my motherfucking name. <laughs> I love it. I'm over here like, yes. Yeah. It's true, though. But that like, goes for any relationship. You know what I mean? Even business, right? Like, you have to... You have to shoot your shot. You got to let them know where you at. Um, and if it doesn't come back to you the way you want it, now you know, mm-hmm. right? Now you know. Now you can move accordingly. So yeah, what she what she did was was protect her 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 own self and allowed me to grow throughout it th- th- throughout that process. So she dribbled uh, the co- the ball to your court. Yeah, no, I'm I'm thankful for shoot it. Shoot your shot, bro. <laughs> shoot your shot. I'm I'm real thankful for it because I it it set me up to shoot my shot the correct way. You know, six months later. So. Well, you ha- you you don't have a meek woman. I, no. I will never forget we no, me and Melanie we went hiking, <laughs> and I don't know what I can't remember what happened. Someone said some disrespectful shit or like honked, like flicked her off. <laughs> Are you fighting at the hike? Yo, she I had never seen. She was red teeth. Yeah, yeah. We, we're working on that. I was like, yo, <laughs> Melanie, chill. She's like, I just so I, I don't like fight. I don't like rude ass motherfuckers. I don't. Like, I will confront the yes. issue. <laughs> I did. <laughs> In head on. I will confront the issues. I don't. Yeah. You know what it is? I just don't like, I just don't get why people feel it's cool to disrespect other people. Like, I was just like, if that's, I also have moments where I laugh. Like, I've had grown men flip me off on the road. By the way, I'm an excellent driver, so this is not, this is just people being rude. Okay? <laughs> She's an okay no, driver. Like driver. But like, for me, if a man gives me the finger, I literally am just like, oh, you poor broken little boy. Like, how bad of you that you feel like that's your way you need to express yourself to me in passing. That's the best you could do. Mm. Oh, I'm sorry, um, but yeah, like I'm not, I'm not into, I'm not into. See what the, I'm dealing with, y'all. I'm not this? into the. Well, because 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 Melanie is is she's not afraid to say how she feels. Is that right. I guess as as a husband or as a man in general? Like I feel like men, not all men, but like you know, sharing feelings can be uncomfortable and just just having to really have to confront them, especially with the woman who's going to make you confront them. Oh, absolutely. Like how I don't, I'm, I don't like to share my feelings. <laughs> At all. Oh, you God. Know? Is that why I'm torn as a human being? Like, my Gemini. It's Gemini. Yes. It's your like, Gemini. Yeah. Oh, my God. This is me. You feel all the feels. You, yeah. I'm like, you feel all the feels, but you don't share all the things. Oh, my right. God. I'm so tricking. she's she's definitely been able to say the right things to, to pull that out of me, for sure. But I had to I had to learn how to do that and, and understand that if this is the person who I'm going to be with or want to be with, then I need to open up more, mm-hmm. you know, and... And, um, yeah, I had to. I had well, what to. do you normally do with all those feelings? You just, like, internalize them? Like, I'm always curious, like, them. what is in the what is in the brain of a man, especially a Gemini man, because I have a lot of questions. Cause, <laughs> um, <laughs> let me tell you what's in – I mean, I can tell you as, as a partner to a Gemini man, all the things are in the brain of a Gemini man. They're mm-hmm. thinking all the time. It's true. Yeah. 
And what are you just like having so, a lot of self talks inside, like reasoning things inside? Like what's going on in there? Like, <laughs> <laughs> inquiring minds want to know. Um, yeah, no, we think about everything. We, you know, I'll speak for myself. I I know everything is always going on for sure. It does. Um, it does. But I pick and choose my battles, mm. and if it's something that I feel like will either work itself out, I say nothing. Mm. Um, or if I feel like, hey, that's just who she is. Or that's who they are. It is what it is, and I act accordingly. You know, so I don't I don't feel the need to always express how I'm thinking because. I feel like the universal will, will work its way out. Melanie will say, <laughs> this huh? is what I'm thinking yeah. right now and uh, no, I feel deal like, with it. I feel like I've gotten better. Yeah. I feel like I've gotten better. I think in our relationship, I definitely was, oh, no, no, no. Like, if I feel this, we're going to talk about it right now because this is how things compound. But I recognize it's not that's not his way. So I recognize that I need to find the time when it's right to approach him with certain things. Now, obviously, sometimes shit happens, and it just you got to deal with it head on. I'm sure. going to confront the issue, <laughs> um, but but for the most part, like I think I've had to learn how to respect how he processes. Well, also because not everything is worth a conversation, in my opinion. Um, she may she don't agree di- with that. She may have a difference. She of said, opinion. "I agree. I agree." <laughs> But I also think that we also have a difference of opinion on what is worth talking about. Mm. And that's 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 I think that's where we differ as yeah. in, as people. Just like him saying like, oh, that's going to work itself out. I'm on the other hand being like, shit, just don't work itself out. You got to do the work to work. itself. That's not out. true. <laughs> it's not true. In shit certain, does work itself out. In certain regards. Yes, I agree. You know, um, but I, I'm just saying in the context of our sometimes relationship, the conversation and, and not just in our relationship, in any relationship, sometimes having that conversation is opening up a can of worms. It didn't need to be opened at all. And you could have been just fine. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And yeah, mm. so some, some, sometimes and now it's bigger, bigger than it, it, it should have it had it, to be. It didn't need to get there. It didn't need to get all the way there. You know, well, I'm so both of you. It's very I'm like, hmm, you're right. You're right. You're right. <laughs> you're right. This is our relationship. You're right. This is our relationship. But I, we literally, I would love to be like, a good like, point in therapy. Yeah, the therapy is probably the therapist is confused. Just, God, I, don't I don't know. know. It sounds both, both, sounds both important. Sound no, no. The therapist is definitely on Melanie's side. <laughs> it's not at I'm all times. Size. This is what they tell me. In the I'm like, okay, yeah. I'm like, about taking sides with, I have a black <laughs> eye over. Melanie found her. Is this your friend? I did find her. She's a black woman. She's wonderful. Yeah. Um, no, we, we, it, it's really, it's really interesting that the thing that I really appreciate about Jared, and th- I think that this is, this would be the thing I think in our communication is that I don't like when he acts like he doesn't know what's going on. Cause I know he always knows what's going on. He's highly intelligent. He's very observant. He's in tune with me. He knows me extremely well. So when he puts on the, I just didn't even, re- yes, you did. <laughs> yes, you did realize. Yes, he you said, did. I'm just not opening up a can of worms. I'm just not opening up a can of worms. So that's why I was like, oh, it's interesting to hear you say it like that. Me, I'm very much a person like, you know, you want all the worms. I, I don't want all the worms. I don't want the. I don't she want the worms, the worms at all. Open. Yeah. I don't want the worms. My, thi- my thing about it is, is that like I always use the like sweeping shit under the rug analogy because it's just like yeah, you could sweep shit under the rug for a long time, but then when you lift that shit up, it's a pile of dirt, and now you got a longer day of cleaning up to do. See, it's not. And so I just it, feel in maintenance over repair. It, it's That's not about sweeping anything under the rug. Maintenance over repair. But maybe the cleaning lady gets that one. <laughs> There's no cleaning Anyways, lady next in the question. There's you know a, who's the clean up woman? Because who is she? Who's Let's the clean up lady that. in the relationship? Is that the therapist? Right. Like, I'm just saying, like, maybe, the the maybe something else comes. It's the Dyson. And, and cleans that up. The Dyson came and make, made it better, guys. <laughs> yeah. Bippity boppity boop. Clean. Done and done. <laughs> the robot vacuum? Yep. The robot. See, yeah. no argument needed. Hilarious. Anyway. <laughs> Oh my gosh! Well, you know, on our show, we um, usually ask guests to share an affirmation. I wanted to see if either one of you or both of you have an affirmation that you like to share. Um, an affirmation? Uh, yes, Melanie and I have noticed that whenever we are aligned on things, um, whether that be buying a house, having kids, um, dinner, <laughs> um, we. Uh, it, it all matches up, and the universe actually puts it in front of Blessings us. Blessings unfold, it, for sure. It, it's like manifestation in a way. You know, Once we're aligned on something, it's very powerful. Mm-hmm. 
Um, so, uh, same page, next stage is, is our, is our affirmation. So once we're, once we're on the same page and we really mean it like, oh yeah, no, I want to buy a house. You ready to buy a house? Yeah, me too. We're ready to buy a house. The house presented itself. Mm. Um, yo, you know what? I, I really want to have kids. Yeah, me too. I really want to have kids with you. <laughs> One day. Cut to pregnant the next day. Boom. Yeah. Yeah. Not yeah. pregnant the next day. I'm shooting day. up the club. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, like, it's just, it, for whatever reason, that's always been um, the theme throughout our relationship. So, same page, next phase. Same, same page, page next, next phase. Phase or stage? Phase, stage. Yeah. Same is, page, next stage. stage. Yeah. I love that. Yeah, yeah. Stage, next and stage. I think it's just, like, it just, pers- just kind of, like, identifies teamwork. Mm. Mm-hmm. And that's really what it is. It's, like, to be a team, you have to be an advocate for your teammate. You have to be an advocate for the team too. Um, so what what is what you want and what you want for your partner should be best for both of you. Mm-hmm. And I think that we've seen that every time. Like anytime there's just been some sort of like non aligned it could be the smallest thing, but as soon as we become aligned, then just the universe is like, Oh, ready. Let's go. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so so that's been working for us. Yeah. Yeah. That's beautiful. That. Thank you. It's like me and my wife. <laughs> exactly. Same page, page next, next phase. phase. Exactly. <laughs> It's true. We manifest really quickly together. You do. We're like, you, you want to do this? So to the point where I'm like, Erica, the other day she was like, I have an idea, but I don't want to say it out loud yet. Because we don't have oh, any time. time. Right. <laughs> I was like, I, I have great ideas, but I'll tell you next year. Yeah. <laughs> January, remind me to tell you our yeah. ideas. Yeah. Yeah. But that's uh, that's powerful. That's power. That's the power of partnership like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Aligned partnership. Aligned. Yes. You notice like people listening, if you're trying to make some shit work, put a circle in a square and it's just not working. Everything else. And yeah. And everything in your life is getting all fucked, fucked up. up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's because you're trying for the wrong shit. Mm. When you're trying for the right shit, everything else falls into place. Use that gem sound Come again. Come on. <laughs> the alignment <laughs> works is universal in all, in all things. Partnerships, dinner, like you said, like if it's supposed to be. The universe will conspire for it to happen. But if you are fighting against that shit, yeah. you know it, bitch. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Put it on the shirt. You, you know, know it, bitch. bitch. You know it, bitch. <laughs> Stop playing, bitch. Stop forcing, Speaking bitch. Speaking of shirts, Stop I, would just, it, bitch. I would just like to say that I wore the honorary Good Moms, Bad Choices Thank uniform you. today Thank in support. You. Thank you for rocking. Solidarity for all the black, hot, fine ass mamas. Thank you. As fuck. Mm-hmm. we're designers so yeah if you're watching on youtube go check out we, we always yeah. we, we sometimes we do our like fashion reveals of our clothing today uh, mila is wearing vintage soles with a i don't know like a boyfriend <laughs> jean um crop top and platform tennies <laughs> our group chat told us that skinny jeans are going out of style so i was like i gotta wear a boyfriend cut but they did say that yesterday and i refuse to believe this. i kind of refuse to you know i'm the kind of person that stays in my styles you need the skinny jeans with boots yeah and they just look good like with like bigger shirts i'm not like a thicker woman i can't wear all like i can't have all things just out and flared i, I need s- some some straightness. Yeah. I still like platform shoes like the Spice Girls in the early 2000s. I'm never letting them go. Do it. <laughs> these are for my mom. <laughs> yes, Stole mom. these from my mom. They coordinate with your sparkly sleeves quite well. That's how I was like, this is going to this is gonna uh, work. <laughs> I'm fancy, but I'm chilling. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was going for. I'm fancy, but I'm chilling. Erica's wearing her um, October witchy outfit. I'm wearing, this is Skims. This is, oh, that's Skims. This oh, it's a Skims situation. This is, it feels very soft. Skims. This is a Costa Rica cloak. Costa Rican witchy Costa cloak Rican. for October. Yes. Oh no, wait, it's November. All my Just jewels kidding. are vintage souls. I'm mean, not vintage souls. Nature by Nature, the label, black owned jewelry designer. Check them out. That blue one. That was from one. New York. Don't look at this one. Don't yeah. one. These, these, <laughs> these, these, gang, gang. <laughs> and Jared here is wearing essentials, fear of God, because he's cool. <laughs> yeah, he's very on trend. <laughs> he's trendy. Oh my goodness. Okay, so before we started the episode, we asked our guests to take a test. Oh, God. No, we, we just asked them to answer some questions I about don't themselves. Like tests. And then we thought it'd be a good idea to ask them to see how much they know about each other. Oh, God. So we're, now we're going to test you. Okay. Oh, oh, no finish. pressure. You've only known each other for nine, nine years. No pressure. I'm going to fail this dun, 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 <laughs> dun, desperately. Dun, dun. It's okay. Okay, baby. Jared, you're first. Tragically. I'm first. <laughs> you're okay, first. great. What's Melanie's favorite color? Purple. Um, what's her overall pet peeve? Wait, did, did I get that right? Yeah. Okay. Right. <laughs> I'm sorry. Correct. Her overall overall pet peeve? Um, cleanliness? She said this. She said this today. 
He got it wrong. Okay, well, <laughs> don't give him. Don't let him cheat. Sorry, he got I, it wrong. Trying to cheat. What was it? It's liaring, lying, oh, lying. liars, lying, lying, yeah. liaring, yeah. liaring. <laughs> Li- all the lies. <laughs> um, what is your pet peeve when it comes? What is her pet peeve when it comes to you? You're her partner. What does she hate when you do? She hate what I do. I what no, I no, no. Like what's something what, that she what's... doesn't like when you do? It's her pet peeve that you do specifically. Um, I don't know. Last minute communication. Don't change up. That's right. When we already made she, plans. She right. hates that. So I'm no, very much so the, a last minute planner. He is a last minute planner. And so the thing about it is, is that he's working things out in his head. But by he the way, we're going to Atlanta to tomorrow. Yeah. By the way, thanks for letting me know right you're now. Welcome. Oh, Five you're seconds. going to Atlanta tomorrow? Yeah. Oh, apparently. Out. Wow. Is that real? Are you, are you <laughs> no, we really are going. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he told and, you today? And she, this, she hates that. And this was a last minute decision <laughs> that was made. So it's like, oh. And, you know, we got kids. So, like, when he's making these decisions also for himself or for our – it's like, okay, you got to let me know. Like, I'm – you guys have done this um, uh, Attached, the book Attached. Have you heard of this? Oh, with your, your attachment style. With the attachment yeah. style. So we're secure in our attachment styles, but on the quad of avoidant versus um, anxious, I veer more anxious, he veers more avoidant. Mm. So it, this is where our breakdown comes from. Oh. So, yeah, that that's my pet peeve is, like, don't – don't give me these details at the last second. My anxiety can't handle it. Oh, yeah. Okay. You, okay. you answered these pack questions, pack honestly. Shit, you going to Atlanta. Yeah, we're going, I'm going to Atlanta. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. <Yeah. laughs> um, what was her childhood pet's name? Majesty. Oh, that was the second one. Uh, <laughs> Ozzy. Ozzy. <laughs> <laughs> wow, these questions, Erica. <laughs> I didn't know they were this deep. Um, what would you say, what would, what would she say is her best quality? Her best quality what would is, she say? Yeah. is um, her ability to be empathetic. Mm-hmm. Oh, interesting. Caring. Caring. Yes. Um, what doing, is her, I'm doing pretty good so yeah, far. Yeah, you're doing good. Wow, nine like, years is showing. What is your, what is, what is, what would she say is her worst quality? Her worst quality. I don't even remember what I wrote. This is hilarious. Um, <laughs> that she's a little messy. She procrastinates. Oh, okay. <laughs> yep, that is that. That's a good one. <laughs> Which end result leaves me messy. messy. <laughs> I think I leave it a tornado Same. everywhere I go. Right. Yeah, <laughs> is that a cancer thing? It is. I don't know. We're just, it's because we're emotional, literally. and everything we're doing is emotionally driven, and yeah. it's just oh Mila like literally just like walks and things fall off her body. <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck? Why is your shoe here? What is? Yeah. Why is this over here? I can pick it up quickly though. I can. If like we're, we're leaving, like I could like check out of a hotel in like five minutes, and like no. the shit looks crazy, Melanie and I'm like, cannot. give me five minutes. I call Melanie a spreader because she just <laughs> her stuff is everywhere. I'm the super spreader. <laughs> <laughs> you got nothing on me, COVID. <laughs> um, what is something she is most sensitive about? Matters of the heart. Her feelings. Oh, baby, you're doing so good. Yeah, I'm doing good. Um, what have you? What has she accomplished that she is most proud of? Her children. True. Her family. Mm-hmm. Um, what is her biggest insecurity? Uh, I don't know. That's a that's a politically correct answer. Niggas <laughs> like men are like. Nothing. Oh, she's not avoided. High avoided. High avoided. I don't. I'm not gonna touch that one. <laughs> nothing. Nothing. She's nothing. Nothing. She's, she's perfect. perfect. <laughs> right. Smart answer. Yeah. Her art. She's okay. sensitive yeah. about her shit. Yeah. With, yeah. with him yeah. for sure. Yeah. Oh really? Like how he critiques you? Yeah, because he's musical. Yes. Yeah, so he's like so, this is sound. Yeah. Like he's like mm, I don't really. So I'm technical. like oh okay sorry I didn't think you'd like that. Okay. I, I'm sorry baby. It's okay. It's okay. Too many beats on that one. Okay. You could have phrased this as a songwriter, as a successful, accomplished songwriter that he is. It's uh, he's dissecting at all times. Yeah. Yeah. Do you? This is not on the list, but do you guys think it works in your favor that you guys are in the same industry, or is it challenging? I think it works. It works for sure. Yeah, we're able to speak on a level like if she was a an accountant, we probably couldn't have the conversations that we have. Mm. You know? It makes sense. Yeah, I almost was an accountant. Oh. Really? I really. I mean, I really wasn't, but I did study accounting and finance in college. Okay. <laughs> did you finish college? I did. Oh wow, you're smart. Look at my smart friend. You smart. You smart. My you smart, smart artist. Friend. <laughs> um, what would be a deal breaker in her relationship? Cheating. No. No. Unwillingness to grow. Ooh. Stagnant. See, I I obviously have that a willingness to grow. He does. <laughs> 
Um, where does she like to go grocery shopping? Trader Joe's. Yep. <laughs> ding, 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 ding. <laughs> <laughs> Who's her favorite musical artist of all time? I'm torn, but it is Stevie Wonder. Ding, 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 ding. Um, I would have said Whitney, Whitney Houston. Houston. Yeah, mm, as that's, well. that's a good one, too. Yeah. She's my favorite singer, but artist? Yeah. Artist, Stevie. yeah, Stevie. <laughs> Kanye might be up there, too, for you. Uh, is he re- we will re- as an we- artist, is he paused right not- now? we will refrain from d- right. diving into that. Okay. <laughs> yeah. He's paused. He's paused right now. He's paused. <laughs> He's paused for any from all categories. <laughs> yeah. um, what is her guilty pleasure? Salt and vinegar chips. <laughs> <laughs> Love is blind. Trashy TV. Uh, yeah. yes, Do you watch yeah. Zeus? What's it called? Zeus, the like ultimate trashy TV of oh, all time. Yeah. You know, oh wow, yeah. it's, I, it might be too trashy. It's I know, real ratchet. I it's, don't know anything about this. Oh, Zeus Network. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Oh, I do know that there is pr- quite interesting programming on there. Yeah. yeah. I haven't gotten into it. You'll get yes. sucked in. Oh God. Oh. I can't. I don't even. <laughs> Not N A, bitch. You can't be putting N A. <laughs> Not available for what question? Not available. What is your favorite porn category? He's gonna. He's what? He's what's my favorite porn category, Jared? I'm done with you. Um, how old was she when she lost her virginity? <laughs> um, 17? Ding, 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 ding. 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 All right. These are uh, good guesses. These are your guesses. That was a guess. Yeah. Um, yeah, was a guess. What moment did she know she loved you? I don't agree with this answer that I wrote down, to be honest. <laughs> what? Yeah, he's not going to know this. Okay. Um moment she fell in love with me um, not i fell in love the moment i loved you <laughs> no um <laughs> i don't remember um, no this is a tough i, t- I literally honest, wrote I this know. thing down but it's just such a vivid memory in my mind of him because you're you're we, on the island helping the locals yeah oh wow yeah it's when i saw him break who i thought that he was mm. he was kind he was caring he was attentive he was willing to work he was willing to help he wasn't lazy and like yeah like <laughs> is that no, he was lazy because, no you know what it is just like you just don't know like there's certain people that just watch things happen and they just sit by and they're like oh it's not my business i stay out of it but there was these guys on the beach and they were trying to move this like big canoe and like jared just went over to help them he left the group to go help them mm. and i just saw that and i was like oh that's a beautiful quality in someone to me it's just a willingness to show up to help um, oh, without expecting anything in return. And it spoke a lot of his character. Mm. And he is that way. It, it's you, interesting you. how sometimes uh, we can create people in our minds before we have the opportunity to know them. Mm-hmm. I've done it a lot of times. Like We're you think you know someone and then they ch- and then if you're open enough to allow them to really show you, then you can, you're open to shift it. But the whole perspective, I yeah. think a lot of times people are not open to shifting it. You make up your mind what you think someone is and then you roll with that. Yeah, yeah. And it's crazy. Like our past experiences kind of shape how we think perceive people yeah. immediately like mm, yeah. i thought you date white women and yeah you're lazy <laughs> <laughs> it's not my type <laughs> he's not my type not over it nope. over it <laughs> no i mean listen if for all the right reasons prove me wrong every time i love it yeah mm-hmm. right right um what is her biggest fear losing me <laughs> no <laughs> spoken <laughs> like a gemini <laughs> bees <laughs> Keep it light, bro. Keep it light. Bees. Bees, nigga. Losing me. Sorry, my bad. It's that simple. You so said, me come up here, I'm no, out. You can have the bad. whole building. She's talking good things about me, so, you know, I want to keep that, in that going. You're in that, in that safe space? Okay. What is her favorite sex position? Mm. <laughs> uh, doggy. From the bag. Yeah. 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 Um, would she prefer to save or spend money? <laughs> uh this season, I would say save. She said so she preferred to make it. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. <laughs> um, I didn't know that was a choice. <laughs> I made it my own choice. That's good. I like that. Who was her celeb crush? <laughs> Michael B. Jordan. Nope. <laughs> no. I mean, isn't he every girl's crush? Right. Um, no. It used to be yeah. Erica's. It, it's no more. No. Mm. It's, it's Tom right Hardy. Oh, Tom. Is that a football mm, player? No. no. He's fine. He's a white boy. Okay. Yeah, he is. <laughs> he is. I was gonna say that sounds white. He's rugged. I love yeah, it. Like, like, what is he in? He's an actor. He was Venom. He was Venom. 
Yeah. <laughs> he always plays like very he's character. Bane and yeah, Bane and Batman. Batman. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, Bane yeah, yeah. Batman. Okay, yeah. He doesn't look so good in that, but but I can see the. I can he's see rugged. The, yeah. yeah, I like it. I like the dark whites. Yeah, <laughs> the dark, dark whites. That didn't, that didn't come the out. The dark brooding soul. Yeah, That's you know, hilarious. like the dark, you know, like the, the serial killer whites. The serial killer whites. No, like, no, 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 no. Are you a serial killer? No. Or are you darkness? Will you kill someone for me? No. Okay. Well, no. I would love that. <laughs> will you murder for me? You will. I don't want you to murder me, but you'll murder others. <laughs> <laughs> this just went all the way left. Uh, you know we're darkness over here. <laughs> a guy did tell me he would kill for me once, and it kind of made my pussy wet. And I was like, "Am I a serial killer? <laughs> Am I a serial killer? No, I'm a former lesbian. <laughs> no, I'm a former lesbian." <laughs> um, how does she feel about non-monogamy? Oh, she doesn't. She doesn't like that at all. <laughs> yeah, that's, wrote, that's a no. She wrote, "Do you?" But, really? But yeah. not, I don't think she meant that for you. Oh, no, no, no. It's not for meant, us. She meant not for you guys. It's like, not for us. Uh, I was like, do you see what happens? Do you, yeah. <laughs> do you dot, dot, dot. We'll see who the serial killer is. <laughs> Melanie's a serial killer now. <laughs> yeah, we, we've had that conversation. <laughs> no, we have not. Did you bring that conversation up? <laughs> no, hell no. He was afraid. Open the can of worms. Go ahead, bro. Go ahead. Talk about your can of worms. Go ahead, bro. No, no, no. I didn't know. I forget how it came up, but we were t- just talking about it. We were just watching a movie. Mm-hmm. We were just, I mean, and if, hypothetically. If, yeah. I feel like it's a common conversation to come up because of the time we live in, like yeah. 90%, any relationships that exist are like 90% open. Well, you know, it's really interesting because there's like recently the conversation of like cheating. Like we know a few people who are going through some hard times, like the conversation of cheating. My homegirl Shan does, did a podcast on cheating and this conversation, it came up. And it's interesting to think about how people define what that is and open relate like if you are both on the same page of having an open relationship that's different if one person is on the page of having an open relationship you cheating (laughs) so it's very i think it's all about the communication so i always tell them i'm like don't be doing no shit to me that makes me feel like i'm left in the dark Mm. right don't let's not ever get to a place where you want something different or i want something different we haven't communicated our desire our interest our curiosity whatever it is yeah i just feel like don't have your partner out here looking crazy yeah Mm. that's why they like don't if i'm your friend i'm um, don't let me be the last person to know. No. Right. If you fuck with me, then you're going to at least like, don't let me be in a room full of people and I'm the only bitch who doesn't know what's up. Right. Exactly. Then I'll fucking fuck you yes, up. Yes, then I'll become a serial killer. Yeah, <laughs> like, then you like that darkness comes Look at Jared's in. face. <laughs> He's like, help, help, send help. <laughs> Blink three times if you yeah. need help. <laughs> <laughs> do, you abuse, do you abuse Jared at home? No, <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> Just like in the leg. But I like it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, a little freaky. Um, what's, your, what's her favorite memory of your relationship? There's just so many. Um, I don't know. I think early on we were at Great Adventure, I think it was. <gasps> Great Adventures. Oh, this is a good story. In Jersey. It's not what I wrote, but it's a good story. <laughs> and I just I, I, I hit two basket two basketball two shots to win like this big bear or, or this monkey, monkey. Right. And we, we named him uh um, Fitzroy. He Fitzroy. was a Rasta monkey. <laughs> yeah. Uh and I just remember her being like, damn. The, it was a really good moment. Yeah, we, we had a good time. That might have that. been actually the moment I think I loved you. <laughs> because because I remember it, it was the swag in which he did. Like, I had no expectations because those games are rigged, like, right? right? They're rigged. Right. So I had no expectation. He sunk those buckets and won the biggest stuffed animal. And I was like, oh, shit. I'm like, you hit that. You're going to hit that. <laughs> you got game, it too? Was like, you got game. So no. it was cute. And then and then that stuffed animal stayed in our lives up until recently. <laughs> you yeah. like finally had to let it go. Yeah, we had to let because you know cancers s- don't like to let shit go. No, we don't. Our son, our son used to like jump on. It was a huge monkey, and then the stuffing started coming out. And we're like, oh, this is dangerous. Yeah, we have to get rid of it. Shout out to Fitzroy, <laughs> our first child. <laughs> uh, she she said her wet are you guys' wedding, but clearly she forgot about Great Adventure. I did clearly. <laughs> um, here's the last question. Um, what what does she wish her partner saw more more of himself? Like, how? What does she wish you saw more in yourself? Mm. I don't. I don't know the answer to that. I'm curious what she wrote. <laughs> um, your grounding. Okay. How grounded you are. Okay. Your grounding. Me he's too. air sign, so he's he can float. He can mm-hmm. be all over the place. He can also um, second guess himself, and so I think the grounding allows him to stand firm in his greatness too, because he's great. Thank you, baby. He's great. Okay, I'm about to fail all my, these. Just my <laughs> answers are not as good as yours. Okay, so I'm going to try to think like you, then. <laughs> Get in the mind of Jared. Uh huh. If you can read my handwriting, sorry. <laughs> sorry <laughs> my handwriting. I can see it. <laughs> okay, what's his favorite color? Black. Correct. Overall pet peeve. 
overall pet peeve, police. <laughs> <laughs> Good one. You don't fuck with the cops. Like, black man in America. I don't, I don't think um, black people fuck with the cops. No, yeah, no but he. It. But the thing about it is, is that Jared is super rational and calm in every situation. Like I'm the firecracker. But something about the police just sent, he becomes someone else. My daughter was at Party City the other day and she's like, Mom, I want to be a police officer oh. for Halloween. I was like, No. <laughs> <laughs> we don't no. fuck with the cops. Oh, no, man. no, no. Sorry, I can't get behind this. Oh, um, shout out to the cops that are good. Yes. yes. Good cops. Um, 1%. Your sp- <laughs> what is this, Peppy? Your space is your space. My space is my space. <laughs> <laughs> basically super spreader basically yeah. give me my space basically, stay in yours this is super spreader so it's, clinging to me bitch it's funny because we have a big house I, I, I'm, <laughs> not, I'm not, say, I'm not saying that's a brag this we have a, a big trait. house right and I have my little things I have, can I just have my one little motherfucker? can I just have like you know no. I'll find a, a freaking hair tie on my nightstand I'm like you have your own nightstand <laughs> my nightstand is full of my altar and stuff yeah, well, you can make room on your nightstand. Nice okay, I'm sorry. Yeah. Cancers are infectious. Um, yeah, super spread. Which leads, which leads me to pet peeve when it comes to your partner. <laughs> pet peeve when it. Oh, he says I'm mess, I'm messy. Yeah, yeah, I'm messy. <laughs> um, what is Jared's childhood pet's name? Checkers. Yep. Wow. What would you say is what would say what? Well, I didn't. I didn't write this right. What was what is the, his best quality? <laughs> Jared's best quality. Mm-hmm. Um, he's Jared's best quality is he's adaptable. He, that's exactly what he wrote. <laughs> wow. wow, he's adaptable. He can switch up quick. Wow, yeah, or any situation. What about his worst quality? His worst quality is. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, um, he's he's impulsive. Him thinking he doesn't have a worst quality. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, that is absolutely true. Jared, Jared, Jared will be, but I'm perfect. I don't understand. Uh, he gets, and he knows. It just makes me laugh yeah. and also want to slap him at the same time. <laughs> Although I never will. What is something he's most sensitive about? Um, something that he's most sensitive about. He's not really sensitive, so this is hard. I don't know, his three-point shot? I don't know. Getting older. Oh, yes. Peter Pan over here. You want to be young forever? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I yeah. I do, I do. You There's scared a, of grays and things? I'm not scared of grays. Like, I, I don't mind, like, looking older or, like, you know, more mature. Um, to the mic. Oh, sorry. <laughs> See, I'm not on my artist shit anymore. <laughs> um, I'm not, you know, looking older, that, that doesn't bother me. It's it's the finality of like it's it's going to end for everyone i think you know what kids does that i i never really feared death until mm. i had kids mm. and the mm. thought of leaving them here mm. in this wretched world <laughs> it's wretched, wretched. I hear without you. me yeah I was like, who's gonna help you when yeah. shit goes wrong yeah yeah i feel that I get that yeah no jared just he's he's young he's always youthful in his spirit so mm. i think yeah <laughs> um what has jared accomplished that he's most proud of I'd say his family. No, sorry. Okay, well then it's good. it's <laughs> going to be his, num- his number one record. <laughs> Which one is it? No, he's proud of where he's at, but more proud of where he's going. Oh, you got very deep on these <laughs> answers. There's no way I can answer that. <laughs> Wait, the next one. He got very. I didn't expensive. realize. I thought. See, I didn't realize that you were going to answer these. I oh. thought this was like for us to, to discuss. But, yeah, yeah, but, what yeah. is Jared's biggest insecurity? <laughs> Being broke. He has no answer. He has no insecurities. Oh. He has no insecurities. None. <laughs> he just left it blank. And there is the duality per- of the Gemini. He's perfect. I'm perfect. He's perfect. And he has no insecurities. He's perfect. Uh. <laughs> what would be a deal breaker in your relationship? For Jared? Mm-hmm. <sighs> um, I think if I was, I don't know, if I was trying to control him. I don't know. It's going to be sort of that continuous disrespect. Yeah. Like, I feel like if I just wasn't giving him the space to be him. Mm. Yeah. Con- continuous. You can do a little disrespect. A little, just a little, little bit. bit. A little it's not continuous. Yeah, you continuously do it, bitch. It's a little baby. It's not a problem. <laughs> sprinkle on a little disrespect every now and then. <laughs> the keep, me, keep me on my toes. Cue the sprinkles out. <laughs> Where does he like to grocery shop? 
He doesn't grocery shop. Oh. Apparently, he does. But <laughs> if I were Whole to Whole Foods. Yep, yeah, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> Favorite musical artist of all time? Stevie Wonder. Yeah. yeah. What is his guilty uh, pleasure? <laughs> Shake Shack? Milkshakes? Cookies and cream shakes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he would literally have one of those every single day. But not he, a cookies and cream shake. He shakes. loves I it. I never had one there. Oh, they're oh, the so one. It's so bomb. Okay, well. I don't even, I, I just taste his because if I, I can't go down that route. Is there a Shake Shack in the Valley? Yeah. yeah. Um, Where is it? Oh, Sherman Oaks. Wait. And Westlake. Yeah, Westlake Village. Yeah. Sherman Oaks. What is your favorite porn? What is his favorite porn category? <laughs> I mean, I already said this. <laughs> I used it for oh, you. Oh, Bugaki? <laughs> Did you know? Did you know? I this? have no idea. This Were is you not watching true. in the bathroom First below? of all, I'm, I'm joking. <laughs> it's not just my favorite. Clarify. It was just a little funny, funny thing. I don't, I don't actually watch a lot yeah, of porn like that. Like, no. You no. Know. When you were if younger? you did. I don't, I, I don't know. Like, porn is porn to me. Like, it's just two people having sex. Like so I don't Ebony. Know. Or like, mu- oh, multiple Orgy, people's. threesome. I, if I were to watch it, if it's if it's hot, it's good. You it's know, hot. I, you it has know. to be hot. It has yeah. to be hot porn, hot people porn. Yeah, hot people. Yeah, hot gotta people. Be porn. Good people, looking people having porn. Gotta be good. Sex. Looking, gotta be real good looking. <laughs> That's people. pretty hard to find these days. That's Beautiful really people. hard. It's yeah. not. Yeah. Is you gotta it? really yeah. sift through some shit. <clears throat> Yikes! Unless you're on Twitter. <sighs> Twitter has better. Twitter. Yeah, Twitter. Yeah, Twitter's the porn. Twitter's the new porn. Yeah. What? I know. Oh lord. I was shocked. Also. Um. Where are we? I did Twitter. I thought it was just 140 characters. No, no, dark, videos. Dark tw- they have videos, and they have. They there's have no, dark Twitter. There's now. no sensory. They don't have. Nothing's bleeped out. I I can put my boobs on there. No one still cares. Wow. No flags. Wow. I know what I'm doing with the rest of the afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> Orlando can teach. Orlando can show you the way. <laughs> Thumbs up. He knows. He knows all the right people to follow. Apparently. Hilarious. All right. How old uh, was Jared when he lost his virginity? Fast ass, 12. How old were you? <laughs> no, no. Damn, man. <laughs> 12. He, was, he was always talking about how, oh, was so and so. And I, I was like, you were doing what at what age? I was like, I was playing sports. I didn't have time. I mean, I was definitely getting blowjobs at 12, but I wasn't. What? Your mother is going to listen to this. <laughs> is she? Yeah. <laughs> you know your mother listens to everything that we do. Hi, mom. Sorry, mom. Sorry, mom. 12? Boys have like a earlier. Why are boys allowed to do that? Because it's the society in which we live boys. in. We, we, we sexualize. We, we like positively enforce men for being sexual. It's true. Yeah. And for women, we shame, shame them. Shame them, yes. Mm-hmm. This is true. So it's like if a guy gets his dick sucked at 12, it's like, good boy. You right, did it, boy. Right. Oh, God. No, no, Not true. that okay. accent. <laughs> <laughs> you did it, boy. Like, you did it, boy. <laughs> that's, how, that's how dads talk to their sons. Go ahead, boy. Hilarious. <laughs> Is this accurate? Is that Jared? No, no. no. <laughs> Actually, my dad kind of sounds like that. But do you sound like that to Cameron? Maybe I will. Oh, God. <laughs> good job, boy. Good job. <laughs> What's the, what is the age? 16. Oh, 16. Okay. Yeah. He, 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 he went penetrative that, that, at 16. Yes. He waited four he years. He waited four years. Yes. <laughs> what moment did you, uh, did, did, wait, what's this question? She, she, read it, she wrote this shit. What? <laughs> Imagine me. What better. moment did he know he loved you? Uh, the moment you knew you loved me? Yeah. Was when you thought I realized that you were perfect. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to answer like him. No, um, uh, the moment you knew you loved me, I don't know when you lost me. Mm. Mm. That's good. What did I write? When she met my family. Um, oh, yeah, I did. that was a good one. Oh, that's cute. It was like a. It was like the family just all blended, all just meshed together. Yeah, I just saw that it would work. My family's very important to me, mm-hmm. and very. we're all very, very close. You know, so when I knew, when I when she came into the fold and I saw how, you know, she was, was with my mother and my father and my aunts and uncles. It was like, okay, yeah, it we, works. We can do this. Oh, it's, it's a good feeling when mm-hmm. that happens. Yes. When it doesn't happen, it is the worst feeling. Yeah. Oh. It's like, okay, this is not going to work. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> hey, well, Next. that was fun. Yeah. Um, what is Jared's biggest fear? Being broke. Going backwards. Mm. So maybe that's being broke. Sure. sure. Mm-hmm. Although were you, have you ever been broke? <laughs> Not in a very long time. <laughs> That's good news. Yeah, you've been rich for a long time. <laughs> rich forever. Rich forever. Rich forever. Born rich, <laughs> uh, What's his favorite sex position? From the back. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Everybody, universal is favorite. That's kind of a universal we position, love it. right? Everybody. I love it. <laughs> um, would he prefer to save or spend money? Spend. 
Yep. Not even a hesitation. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Um, who is his celebrity crush? Okay. It's an old one. I, I didn't know what to write. An old one? Yeah, you you know who like it is. How old? I could run down a list. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Start the list. Um, <laughs> Beyonce? <laughs> Joan Smalls? Mm-hmm. Who mm-hmm. is Joan Smalls? Supermodel. Uh, is it Joan Smalls? Mm-hmm. It is. That, I should have gone first. Mm-hmm. Gone. Yeah, Joan Smalls. Mm-hmm. How does Jared feel about non-monogamy? I think he's fine with it. He says he doesn't judge. Yeah, he doesn't judge. Yeah. Favorite memory of your relationship? Um, favorite memory of yours? Our, our wedding? Uh, yes. Oh, we have the same answer? Mm-hmm. Look at that. We should get married again. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, last question. What do you wish your partner saw more of? What the fuck am I writing? <laughs> <laughs> I was physical. It was a, it was a challenge. I didn't have time to spell check. I don't even know how you it's fucking. It's fine, read. girl. It's fine. Okay, what do you what do you wish your partner saw more of in his self? Herself. 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 What more? What do I think? What do you? What does he? <laughs> What do you think he? I was like, is this a trick question? What do you think? <laughs> is this a double entendre? You saw more of of yourself of, of yourself. myself. Um. Uh, I don't know. Um, mm. It has to do with me. <laughs> of course, it does. <laughs> Shocker! <laughs> How much you love me? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Witchy Melanie knows all the answers. Yeah. <laughs> you guys How did really good. How much you love me? Yeah. 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 Okay, love yeah. hurts. Yeah. Nearly have sex in the car. For sure. Perfect. I love oh, that. Yeah. See, I was going to send it to you on the way, and I was like, first of all, they're driving. Second of all, they're going to cheat. So no. Hilarious. They're going to cheat. <laughs> I love it. That was pretty good. That was good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, well, that was fun. Yeah, that was fun. You're still getting it on in the car sometimes. Sometimes you got to... D- Listen, I'm going to just say this. These kids, <laughs> between them waking up at night, coming, one of them can walk into the room now. Like, it's like a... It's a really, really interesting thing. Ironically, we were with my girl, Shan... And she had just had her daughter and she was like, so, you know, like what's sex like, like married? And I was like, you know, I'm like, it's great. Like there's, it hasn't changed for us as far as the fact that, but just like our son wants to come in our bed every single night. That night he didn't come into our room. That night we had amazing sex. That night we conceived our daughter. Oh my God. Oh my God. It was just the like, one we just, time. I was like, we just going to have babies coming into our room for the next little while. Okay, great. <laughs> But um, but yeah, it's it's uh, it's it's really crazy how that how that how that happened. Yeah, and that's why I have a vasectomy now. <laughs> you do? I do. Oh, wow. are you sharing this publicly? I'm sharing wow. it publicly. Wow, wow. congratulations! Yes. Well, I, you know, I, 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 honestly, I mean, the thing is, you can reverse it at any time. But yeah. you can. But I honestly forgot about it. But my balls hurt. So like, I was, <laughs> it's wait, fresh. It they still hurt. Oh, you got it <laughs> recently? Two day, three days ago. Oh, oh my shit. god! What did wait, it so hurt? Is, it, is it non-invasive? Like it's like I don't. They always make it seem like it's like a walk in the park. It's surgery. Uh, yeah. So you just had to you they go under. No. No. But it's it is. Cool. They numb surgery. you. They just numb it. They numb it. Yeah. Oh my god. <gasps> Were you there? I was in the waiting room. Oh my god. You know what? I, I, Apparently there was a cute nurse in the waiting in, in the room with him. That, 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 that helps him out. Name. I commend well, you for you this because she's been through enough. <laughs> I agree. I think all women have been through enough if you're making that decision as a man. You know what I'm saying? Or as a as as a partner. Um and it's a lot more invasive for y'all to take yes. care of that. You know what I mean? Yes. So I almost looked at it as like, okay, this is my partner for life. We don't want any more kids. Yep. It's not on her now. She <laughs> did what she needed to do. You know what I mean? After this uncomfortability for a couple of days, um, it's done. You can and just shoot at the club no matter what. Is what I'm saying. It's, and nothing changes. <laughs> I'm looking forward to having the best sex of my life. The worry-free. The worry-free We sex. ain't going to have no kids. And no more kids coming into the bed. Yeah. You don't have to be on birth control. No. Or none of that. That's yeah. a huge stress. Yeah. And I think a lot of men look at it. Oh, you, I'm, uh, you, you took my balls or you castrated me. It's, that's not That's not. That's not that's what not this what is. Happens. That's yeah. not what this is. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. You can still ejaculate. Do, ejaculate. You can still do all the things that you do right now, except you won't have any babies. Right. And... If, you know, like I said, I don't want any more. Well, that's I'm a good. huge stress you. to eliminate. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, Thank Thank you very much. Deal. Happy yeah. anniversary, Jess. Yeah. Hey. I mean, it's a little, it's uncomfortable. I'm sitting here a little uncomfortable. Are you on pain meds? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But um, I didn't take them today because I just don't like taking Thank medication you. like that. But um, Feel the it's pain. Good. Feel the pain. It's good. It's All not things- even pain. It's like a, I don't know. 
Like it's, annoying. Like a, it's like a little pressure. Yeah, mm-hmm. a little pressure and like some tightness. Or like, you know, every once in a while it feels like you, you don't understand. It's like when someone, no, when somebody like just like, t- you know. Like, <laughs> Flexy of the balls. <laughs> you know that feeling? Yeah. The ball flick. The ball yeah, I mean, flick. It's just like, oh, but you're good. Small you know price I mean? to pay. Small price Agreed. to pay. Agreed. Yeah, the future is bright. <laughs> well, cheers to unprotected sex with no babies. Yeah. Yes. Amen. Come on. Yes, I love that for you guys. Thank you. Thanks. Um, so at the beginning of the show, you guys pulled a card. Oh, yeah. yeah. I think we should read what the cards were pulled, what they were. I, Melanie, I believe you pulled the, the Eight, Eight of, of Pentacles. Pentacles. And let me pull up our good old Lady Tarot. And Eight of Pentacles upright. So, the Eight of Pentacles represents apprenticeship, repetitive tasks, mastery, skill development. The Eight of Pentacles is a card of apprenticeship and mastery. When this card appears in a tarot reading, you are working hard to improve your skills and becoming a master at what you do. You may have recently changed your work, education, or financial circumstances, and now you are applying your sheer determination and concentration to master the new skill that you are learning. You are diligent and hardworking, and you are applying yourself fully to whatever is at the center of your attention. The Eight of Pentacles may indicate further education or study in order to hone your skills. You may already be proficient in a particular skill set, but you are now seeking to master those skills. Um, You know that it will require a lot of focus and dedication in your studies, but you are willing to work hard and pay attention to the details. You know that you will not learn these advanced skills overnight, but you are prepared for the journey towards becoming a master at your chosen expertise. More broadly, the Eight of Pentacles suggests that you are working away at the finer details of the various aspects of your life in an effort to continuously improve your situation. You may be unhappy with your current state and know you need to make some important changes in your life to increase your overall satisfaction. The Pentacle, the Eight of Pentacles is, an, is encouragement to keep doing what you're doing as it will eventually lead to success. Ashe, ashe. I received that. Listen, I had a reading, uh, like a numerology reading recently. Wonderful. I'll connect you guys with her. She's amazing. Um, And this is exactly the chapter of my life that I'm in, uh, according to my life chart. Wow. So this is like really affirmative. Amazing. Thank you for that. What you got, Jared? I'm the Knight of Brooms. Which is the Knight of Wands, uh, traditionally. Okay. Except for this this deck. (laughs) (laughs) The deck. Alicia's. Mahogany Tarot, please send us another deck. (laughs) I need to text her. (laughs) Um, while the page of wands marks the initial spark of a new idea, the knight of wands shows the actual pursuit of that idea. When this card appears in a tarot reading, you are charged up with energy, passion, motivation, and enthusiasm, and you channel that energy through your inspired action. You have a clear vision about what you want to create, and fueled by your passion and inspiration, you are now moving forward with leaps and bounds to turn your vision into reality. This card is your sign to go for it. Mm. I love it. You're bold and courageous and willing to venture into unknown territories to further your mission and your dreams. You don't really care if danger lies ahead. In fact, if it does, then it becomes all the more exciting and thrilling for you. Adventures like this light you up because you know growth and expansion are waiting on the other side. Be a pioneer and take calculated risks to reach new heights. In this light, the Knight of Wands gives you the feeling that you can take on the world. You are so committed to what your vision and purpose are that you will stop at nothing to bring it to life. As you pursue your goals, your confidence skyrockets, and you re- realize that your potential is limitless. You can do anything. Hmm. Let's go. Let's, Let's go. go. Let's go, season. Okay, couple. Y'all, y'all about to master and conquer. Right. Let's do it. Let's get it. Let's hey. Let's hey. Hey. Yes. It is. Yes. yes. Well, thank you guys so much for coming for on. Having us. Wait, I want to ask them if they have a hoary. Oh, do you have? Oh. You know, we talked about that. I don't really. Do you have, have any a, like hot sex marriage hoaries? Okay, not marriage. So I'll I'll share one of my favorite. This is just one. It's of my not favorite. really a horror. It's story, not a horror. It does not. It's funny. It's like right, it's right. like a, this is one of my favorite just nights in general. <laughs> so we went to one of my favorite restaurants in New York called Gali, which is like this like Italian restaurant. Love to go there. They had these clams, and it comes in this amazing sauce. So the chef knew that I love the sauce, and he sent me home with a huge like extra little container of it. <laughs> and we went home that night, and we had I just remember back to my apartment. We'd eaten the best meal because that's what we just love to do. Just like eat have sex, do all that. Go back to the house, have sex. It was amazing. And then after we had the most amazing sex that night, I looked over into the kitchen and I was like, we got that sauce. (laughs) And so we Mm -hmm. went over to the stove, heat that shit up, butt naked, standing in front of the the 
the the stove, eating out of the pan, feeding each other bread and clam sauce. Aww, and it was that's one of my. I thought of, you were gonna put the sauce on him and lick it off. I mean, no, no, no. See, oh, I mean, I mean there, there, well, there, there, that's a different story about the sex. But, but that, that to me, whatever the combination think, of that sauce and the sex, the, because it's the food for me. It's the, the food is a love language, and well, this it's is pleasure. How we, it's this all is, pleasure. This is how we fell in love: is eating food, like yeah. trying all these different restaurants, traveling. Just making love all over the world. It was wonderful. This is my ideal love story. Sex and food. Food. This is it. This is all we want to do. Make me full and happy. Happy. Fuck me, feed me. Fuck me, feed me. (laughs) I'm into it. Um, One more thing before we end. If you were giving couples one word of advice, what would it be as you guys have had this One word? Not one word. Just some advice. What is your one piece of advice for couples, young, thinking about marriage, long term? What is your advice? Thinking about marriage, mm-hmm. yeah, um, therapy. It really helped me. You know, I was I was definitely adverse to it at first, and Melanie's like, "No, we really should, we really should." And it's it's helped me a lot, and it's helped I think both of us understand each other even better. Um, so I would say, yeah, don't don't be don't be scared of that mm-hmm. at all. You know, yeah, it therapy is amazing. Um, I mean, it's going to sound cliche, but it's really communication. It's just, it, it is just everything. I think, I think it's a skill that requires maintenance and, and attention and you have to be, you have to have self-awareness, but communication is really everything. I feel like a lot of shit gets lost and damaged because of a lack of communication. Some people don't want to, they're afraid. Some people don't know how. So whatever that is, work on it. Just work on finding how you communicate with your partner, yes. speak their language to them. Yeah. Cause if you know, you have a good woman or a good man, like, there, there are going to be bumps in the road, period, you know? So you need to be able to break through those barriers to get to the other side. Also, I'm going to go back on all of these, both of these, both cliche answers, and I'm just going to go team. Like, my word is team. Mm. Like, the teammate aspect of a relationship is everything, <laughs> I think. It's like when you look at that person as your teammate, you're not trying to be right. You're not trying to control. You're not trying to... Do make them do what you want them to do. It's about what's best for the team. How do we win together? Yes. And that's really what it is. It's two people individually coming together for a common goal. And that that to me is just like it's just team personified. Yeah, and I think like within the team, I you know the man sometimes always feels like he's got to be Kobe or Jordan, the lead, you know leading I mean? the team all the time. And you don't need to be that all the time. You know, some, sometimes you're Draymond Green. Sometimes you're the role player to keep things moving, mm-hmm. you know. Sometimes you are Jordan, you know. And I think you need to allow each other that that lateral movement um, to, to move together as the team. Mm. I love that. I love that, especially for men, because I feel like I think even men sometimes don't even want to take on that role, but they feel like they have to. Like they're supposed to take on this role of like. Like if you aren't an alpha male, if you aren't a leader, right. then you're not really right. a man in, in so many ways. It's bullshit. And, yeah. It's bullshit. It really is. You know, like it. we are a team. She truly is my partner and I'm hers. Right. So we're in it together, period. That's that's really it. And sometimes someone's going to have to take the lead and take a sometimes. break. Yeah, yeah. Like it's not always. Yeah. And as somebody who who definitely is a take charge type person, very like we'll go get it done. I don't want to be in the driver's seat all the time. Mm-hmm. I really don't. And it's I'm sure like he's learned that over the years. Like, I mean, there's certain times where he'll be like, I didn't know you were that. Tradi-. I'm like, please, I don't want to be steering this ship all the time. I want somebody that I can be like, I'm going to go take a nap. You're going to lead us to the next place. Right, like, right. It, it's really, really important. And then sometimes he, too, turns to me and is like, all right, like. I'll let you be the guide. And I think that that's what works mm-hmm. works for us. Thank you guys so much. Thanks. I really appreciate you guys, friends. I think people underestimate, like, single people, if you're listening. I think sometimes there's, like, this weird thing about, like, single people hanging out with married people. And, like, oh, you don't want to bring your single bitch friend. And it's, like, I really think there's a huge benefit in hanging out with and spending time with healthy, loving couples. It's, like, if you are in a place in your life where you want that in real life and you know like attracting that is spending time with your healthy couple friends and seeing the examples and seeing all the ways that you can do it and how other people do it and how it works and like actually seeing examples of it I think one of the things I've realized too like just being in a relationship that's serious is that like I haven't had that many example 
of healthy love. Mm. And so when I'm in it, it feels foreign and it's because I've never seen it. I've never witnessed it. Mm. So it's like if you have friends that are in healthy, loving relationships, like go eat dinner over there. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Come on over, y'all. Yeah, hang out. You're cooking dinner. Come on. It's it's so important. So I appreciate you guys so much for being honest and coming and hanging out with us. Thank Thank you, you. Jared. Of course, my pleasure. Coming and hanging out with us and letting us get all in your business and shit. (laughs) It's what you do. Thank Thank you. you. Can you tell the people where they can find y'all? Yeah, um, at Melanie Fiona on Instagram and Twitter, apparently where you can watch porn. <laughs> and um, Jared? Oh, you can find me on Melanie's page. <laughs> <laughs> and Erica's like, I don't think I've ever met Jared. I was like, me either, but I know him from Instagram. No, I yeah. said I met him. No, I was, like, I was like, I've yeah. seen him on Instagram. There you go. <laughs> I, was like, I don't think I've heard him speak because I've never sp- spoken to him. I saw him at Melanie's party, but Stevie Wonder was there, so I couldn't focus on anything but Stevie Wonder singing fucking Happy Birthday. Wait, guys, can you do a duet Such to take us away? Can you, guys, you know Jared can sing, too. Jared they're, can they're, sing. They're like an R&B singing couple. Can you guys just like... <laughs> <clears throat> Jared, what you can sing? Do we have People any song requests, Erica? <laughs> oh, you have a call. I have a conference okay, call. Okay, sorry. Yeah. Never mind. Damn. Next, next time. Next please time. have Literally us back. Has a please call. have yeah. us back. Okay, okay, I have a conference call, too. Yeah. Okay, yes. one o'clock. All right, ladies. Well, um, and then gentlemen listening, you know where to find us at goodmoms underscore bad choices. Make sure you go rate us on Apple Podcasts, subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're going to Costa Rica, so check that out. Link hey. in the episode description. Come to our retreat in February 2023. You have time to make those payments. Make yourself a priority. And anything else? I want to say something. Sure. Yes. I just want to say that I am so proud of both of you guys. Thank you. I have seen what you guys have built, grown, evolved, manifested. Um, you guys have just really evolved so beautifully, and you guys deserve all the flowers. And we're so happy to be here, but I'm just so happy to guys see you guys shining in such a bright way. And like, as your friends and as moms, this is the shit. This is the shit. It is needed. And I hope you guys feel fucking proud of yourselves. Thank you. Thank you. you guys are killing it. Thank you. And so everyone who's listening, y'all are doing the right thing, supporting, listening, finding your community through these amazing women. And um, I'm just so happy for you guys. Oh, thank you. Love I you. love you. I yeah, I love that. you guys. I love you. Thank you. All right. Well, we out, y'all. Bye. 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 <laughs> Peace.